Well, it's Friday, Shannon. We're a couple of days late, but boy, is it worth it. We've got a great interview today, I think. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm, you know, marketing your business is, it's so critically important. And there's so many places that you could be doing it that, uh, speaking for myself, you know, my head often explodes. It's like, okay, well, where do I put my resources? You know, mm. I've got this section. The, I, I got to be up on social. I got to, do I do video? Do I do search engine optimization? You know, what's changed over the years? All different kinds of of uh, things pulling at your, atten- uh, you know, your your limited ad dollars. So I'm I'm really happy to have somebody here today that's going to help us uh, uh, come up with a strategy for marketing your small business. Yeah, I think, and you'll hear this in the interview, but you know, I I think the important thing is that you you need to be intentional. It you won't get everything right out of the gate, but you need to have a plan. But the plan can be pretty easy. Like there's no excuse for not having a plan. After you listen to this episode, there's two things that Taylor Jacobson's going to tell you uh, throughout the episode. And by the time you get to the end, you will know how to craft your marketing plan. In fact, you may even be finished crafting your marketing plan by the time you finish listening. I, 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 yeah. I certainly think like he, he boils it down. Of course you can get nuanced and all that stuff, but that's where you can get paralyzed with, with, you know, in the details. And you don't want to do that. Like just start with the big questions that he asks, answer those and get rolling. And I think uh, like he really knows how to drill right to the heart of it. And I, yeah. Um, and I, and I, well, I really enjoyed, you know, we're asking this new question about, uh, recently about, you know, action, what, what action item can you do today and what would they recommend? And I think his answer is one of the best that we've had. It's and the I epitome think that, of why we're asking the question. Yeah. Fact, I, I yeah. think that by the, like you said, by the time you get to the end of the show and he gives you that action item to take away, it's going to be something that you can just start immediately and it'll have a real positive impact on your business. Totally. I think, I think you're going to love the show. Totally. You mentioned resources, Shannon. I want to take a minute and talk about Linode at linode.com slash SBS, because you do need to pool all your resources together. You need to be smart about it. And one of the things that you're going to need for your business Almost every business today, in fact, I think arguably every business today is going to need to serve something from online. And you want to host whatever it is you're serving with people that know how to manage servers. You're going to need to figure out how to run your business. Taylor's going to help teach us how to market our businesses. And the folks at Linode are going to take care of the infrastructure to make sure that your servers are doing what you need them to do because whatever you need, you can build it on Linode. And if you're a geek, that means you can do your development work there. You can do all your command line stuff. But if you're not a geek, that's fine too. Their cloud manager lets you get up and running with all kinds of different setups without ever even knowing the technical details of how that happened. Even better, you get a $20 credit just for being a small business show listener. And you get that credit by going to linode.com slash SBS. That's L I N O D E.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. And now, Shannon, I really want to introduce everybody to Taylor Jacobson, if that's all right by you. Let's do it, man. I'm ready to small business. Take your phone. Set it up in a way where you can record a horizontal horizontal video with, with a good setting and make yourself talk to the camera for three to five minutes with it recording about what your company does, what you do better than your competitors, and how you can genuinely help customers and potential customers. Stop it, go back and watch it, and then that's your starting point. Just, re- just get comfortable with being in front of a camera. I think that's a majority of why people don't don't want to get don't want to get you know um, in, in you know into videography is they're afraid of talking to a camera. I hear it all the time. Hey, Dave, you know, 
getting your business noticed is a constant challenge. You know, I fought this battle my whole life, right? Where where right. do you advertise? What's the best way to connect with customers? How do you take uh, you know a limited we're advertising? Still, we're budget? still talking about it for this show. Yeah, like it's you know it's it's a constant thing for every business all the time. Yeah. all the time. So I always yeah. I'm, I'm I'm always asking myself, you know, gosh, I only have X to spend. Or, you know, what do I ever? Where do I put it? So I'm I'm excited today uh, to have someone joining us who's you know a marketing expert, uh, Taylor Jacobson, who I follow on LinkedIn, and I think he's got a, a great story. He specializes in help in helping small businesses get noticed with various techniques that we're going to talk about today. Taylor, thanks so much for coming on the show. Absolutely, thanks a lot, guys, for uh, for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting educated here because uh, I, I always need I help. I need it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is, this is, I was just thinking, Shannon, this is one of those times. Taylor, we talk a lot on the show about one of our favorite things a guest said to us a number of years ago was to avoid fear-based decisions, right? And what you just described, Shannon, you know, I've only got a limited budget to spend. Where do I spend it? I don't know where to spend it. That's the kind of thinking that results in a fear-based decision right. of doing nothing, right? Like the, like the two worst things, don't take action and do it because of fear. Like those are the things we work to avoid. Hopefully you, Taylor, can help us all avoid that. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can at least, you know, uh, you know, offer some type of inspiration you know, related Perfect. to that topic. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. Good. So, so let's start with a little bit of background about you. How, how did you get started in marketing and what types of businesses uh, do you typically work with? I, uh, I, I, I got started into marketing pretty randomly. Um, I started out at a, uh, a four year university, it really jumping from, from degree to degree not really knowing what direction I wanted to go. And uh, I was home one weekend, I was, I was like 20, 21 years old. And I was waiting for my mom to get her hair done um, downtown Oshkosh on Main Street. And I happened to be in a bookstore. And I randomly picked up um, the new rules of PR and marketing by David Meerman Scott. I don't remember if it was like the cover of the book that attracted me, but I bought it, I read it, and I just thought it was a really cool topic. And, and from there, um, went on with school, went into marketing, picked up an internship um, at an agency in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And then from there, I've uh, hopped around to a couple of different places, kind of been doing my own thing. And uh, it's, it's just, it's something that, that never ends. There's, there's so much, right. there's so many new things coming out all the time related to the marketing world that um, it's, it's, it's something that I have a hard time keeping up with. And I kind of like that because it's, it's always offering something new to learn and, 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 you know, get, get a, a more professional look at, I guess. Yeah. Nice. That's great. So kind of like we talked about when we were getting started here is being overwhelmed with the sheer number of, of choices that, uh, and, and places that I think I need to be marketing, you know, my businesses on social SEO work for my website that I get emails from people all over the world that tell me they're experts and they're going to help me. Uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, you know, what would you tell a small business owner like myself that's kind of overwhelmed and bombarded with so many choices? The the best way to handle that, I would really break it down. And this is what I tell uh, my current clients and then anybody that I'm talking to that comes to me for any advice at all um, related to this subject. I really just break it down to what are your goals. And from there, I just go, is it is it more bottom line sales generated goals that you want to go after? Or are you making enough to where you can you can you can pull off the heavy sales funnels and maybe go a little more branding and just gain more of a of a recognized audience. Um, that's really where where I start. I break it down on whether it's one of those two things: is it more sales driven goals or is it more awareness and and branding goals that you want to go after? And then from there, um, you know, it's it's really just about putting a plan together that 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 works for you and you know, keeping in mind where is your audience and, and just start somewhere that, that feels comfortable. And I think it's probably something that you guys talk a lot about on the show and it's just do things, you know, you can plan and plan and plan all day, but until you really start executing, um, it's, it's, it's hard to learn. So, um, just start doing things and, and figure out what works and don't be afraid to, you know, push, push the limits. That's how you get noticed nowadays. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. Don't, don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, easy, it's easy to sit here and say, yep, it is. It, it is really the right, is. It's the right thing for it, sure. It, yeah. it for sure is. And, and kind of going back to our music, you know, our musician conversation, it's, you know, that, that first gig is insanely scary. I, you know, that first open mic that you do is just, it's nuts. It, it plays in your head, you're sweating, but the 20th time that you do it, you just get used to doing it. And it's, 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 it's the same concept. It just becomes a regular pattern for you and it becomes, you know, just doing it and not so much all of the, all of the anxiety around it, because it's just, it's, it just, be, it needs to become a pattern, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> well, that's, a, that's a good point, right? Because it, it, Taylor and I are both musicians. We were, we were talking before we started recording about our, our, our musical endeavors and lives. And, but you're right that anything we do in music is a great example of it because you are exposing yourself in, in some way, not the other way. Uh, but you know, you're putting yourself out there and, and you're, <laughs> and you're, uh, you, you know, you, you're you're potentially going to fail, right? Now, with music, it's great because everybody that came to watch you is actually rooting for your success. It's not like you're fighting against another band, you know, where, uh, where, where, you know, somebody actually has to lose. Everybody gets to win together, and 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 it. When you remember that, it it can help. But you're right. It's once you get into those patterns, every gig is the same. You are putting yourself out there. It is a live art. And something could go wrong. You could do something wrong. Something could go wrong that you have no control over. But you put those patterns into place so that you get yourself to the stage without really overthinking too much. And then when you're on stage, you you do your thing. It's much easier once you're there. If you start thinking about it leading up to it, that's where you can easily talk yourself out of it. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Same thing here. Yeah. That's great. So, Taylor, when... When you work with companies, uh, are they typically coming to you as they're getting started and they're, they're trying to grow and promote, or are they pulling their hair out, trying to figure out, you know, why it's not working or, or you know, what's going on? And, and kind of a follow-up to that, do you see common mistakes that small business owners are making in their marketing that you help them, you know, over, overcome? Sure. Uh to answer your first question, I would say 95% of the people that I talk to, um, you know, whether I'm reaching out or they're coming to me, they, they have a business and they're just kind of like you said, they're kind of to the point where they're pulling their hair out trying to figure out what it is that they need to do. Um, and a majority of the time kind of goes back to our, our, our point of they're, they're reading and they're reading and they're planning and they're planning and they're strategizing and they're strategizing and that's really all they're doing. And, and they're not really putting together any type of execution based tactics. Uh, I would say that's, that's, that general topic is definitely the, you know, the, the, the theme that I'm seeing when I'm talking to people. Um, I, I've, I've worked with a couple of companies that came to me, like, you know, before they, before they initially launched. But um, like I said, a majority of the time, it, it's, it's, it's small business owners that, again, need one of two things. They either need a larger audience and just a better recognized name within their, their, you know, their target audience, or they just need, you know, they, they need help with that bottom line. They need more sales. And again, that's where I bring the conversation back to whenever, whenever I hear these types of situations, because then it gives you a it gives you a starting point, and I think that's something that a lot of people need is they just need a good place to start, um, and then you know you push them in the right direction. And the ones that really want to be successful are going to be the ones that that take those chances and and do things that are a little bit outside their comfort zone. But again, I I, I truly believe, and I and I hear a lot of people say it. That's that's how you make it, you know, and especially with the you know, the economic situation and the, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole situation we have going on here. Um, it's especially important to be even more creative during a time like this. And I've, I've seen a lot of really cool examples on social media of small businesses and, and smaller local companies, you know, making adjustments and, and getting super creative to, you know, stay, stay above water. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got to be creative right now. That's for sure. Yeah. One of the ways, you know, we talk about story all the time. Uh, and I'm sure you would agree that, you know, trying to come up and or having a compelling story for your business is important. Being authentic, um, you know, something to sh that you can share that connects with your customers. Do you help 
you know, companies do that? What if they think they don't have a compelling story? You know, what do you do? Uh, how, how do you, you know, work through that, that process? Um, I, I definitely don't think, I think the reality of it is not, not every single company has some, you know, founded in a garage type right, story right. and then it yeah. evolved into, you know, the multi-million dollar scale <laughs> business. You know, I, I, I just think, you know, when looking at it from a realistic standpoint, that's just not the case. And I have a couple of clients that, you know, their, their story of how they got started, you know, really just at the end of the day, just is not compelling. And they know that and they, they use that to their advantage with the type of work that they do. Um, but I think the way you can, you can substitute you know, not having this glamorous story of how you got started is what a lot of what a lot of social media influencers and, and professionals, especially on LinkedIn, are starting to do is kind of document their their day to day life in what they do. Um, I know that's it, 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 it sounds like a lot of work and it and it and it does take a commitment to do something like that. But um, for industries that aren't as glamorous, say, um, you know, a, a plumber or a heating and cooling specialist. It, I understand that it, it might be intimidating to try and make that topic fun and exciting, but there are guys out there that have the personality and the attitude where if they kind of just did a day in the life type deal and showed people what it is they do, I think that's the way you can supplement telling your, your story if how you got started if you know, in your opinion, isn't isn't glamorous and compelling. I think doing stuff like that I is like kind of how you can substitute. Yeah, it's yeah, that's uh, cool. something I'm starting to see. You know, some people start to do, but I still think I still think there's a ton of opportunity to kind of take the, um, you know, the Gary V or the Lewis Holmes or the um, you know, guys like that that are constantly just documenting their days in and out now. Gary's got 12 guys following him around at all times with cameras and mics and all that kind of stuff. But what, with what you can do on a smartphone, um, it, it, there's, I, I just think there's a ton of opportunity for people to do that and just and to show their customers who they are, not only as a company, but as a person. Yeah, I, I think that's really a, a, a good point that you make is that especially or you may not think it's interesting because you're in it all the time and doing it. But if you if you just add a little personality to it or uh, talk about, I mean, you know, people are interested in what's going on. And if you share that uh, with them, I, I think it can really add to your story. And you, if, if, if you don't have a great founder story, I, I agree. I, I don't know that it that matters. I mean, let's face it. A lot of companies are like, well, I'm starting this because I need to make a living <laughs> and I'm going to exactly. do it. Right. And there's not, and that's great, but, you that can, actually can be a compelling story. Yeah, yeah that's right. Like it, you know, it. I've found it. It took me a while to start to see the story I could tell about my business because, it, like you said, when you're in it, it doesn't sound interesting. Yeah, and it exactly. took somebody like you, Taylor, saying, "Wait a minute! Like the story is this. You know, the story is you. Like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, and and then helping craft that." can be a great thing. So sometimes it really does take a, 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 you know, an outsider to look at it and, and show you what your story is. Cause it's I have hard to, to I have to constantly remind my brother who, if you, you said, you know, you said you've seen a number of my fishing posts, a, a majority yeah, of the we're time. We're going to talk about that next. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, a majority of the time, the, the subject figure, sorry to kind of jump the gun. No, there, it's good. I want to, I want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm constantly, because I know, because I'm going to make him listen to this once you guys put this out, <laughs> but he, I have to constantly remind my brother that like he, he, he's so good at what he does that like, He's got to get used to kind of being in front of a camera and being on film. He he still doesn't fully understand the the value in that. He's getting better at it, but um, it's it's yeah, it's one of those things that it like you said, it it, it kind of takes an outsider for for somebody to be to be you know captivated enough to know what to do. But yeah, I just yeah, it's it's just. I like the point that you made there about about being an outsider's perspective because I think that's something that a lot of people can you know find value in. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, okay, yeah. so I want I want to talk about LinkedIn. I want to talk about fishing because I love to fish, and that's probably what uh, you know 
got my got my attention to what you were doing is because you you know you have a lot of posts on LinkedIn and you're showing um, you know we're out in nature we're catching fish I love that stuff so tell us about bait uh, bait by Jake I know this is one of your uh, projects and those kind of posts on LinkedIn and uh, you know do those posts kind of build your story and do they connect you to potential clients uh, how, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, bait by Jake is, is yeah, a project is a good way to describe it as it's, it's nothing that we've taken full time or anything yet. We're still, we're still kind of at the drawing board with, with where we want to go with it. But it, it is, it started when I bought my house. Um, we bought a house in the, in the lot goes way, 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 way back. And it's just a big grass, uh, field. And when I was taking my dogs out at night, I noticed um, when I was shining the flashlight around that our, our yard was filled with night crawlers every single <laughs> night, literally to the point my wife won't go outside at night after a rain because if, if you sit on the deck and you just listen, there are so many of them that you can hear the leaves crunching and you can oh, actually wow. hear like the grass moving. Yeah, wow. it's kind of creepy. So um, you, you I, bought a bait farm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of did and didn't even realize it. Yeah. <laughs> Turning t- turns out the the woman that we bought it from was a big gardener, and she had, mm-hmm. and she at one point you know was doing it you know a whole bunch of stuff with the lot, so I'm sure she kept the the soil you know healthy and rich, which which helps. But that's where that started, and then I, I had you know there's a lot of tournaments and a lot of you know professional fishermen and, and enthusiasts that reside here in uh, you know kind of the Winnebago system area. So I kind of started, uh, you know, a little wholesale business where I sell in bulk, and then I have a, you know, a fridge in the garage where guys stop by, and I I always have it readily available. It's it's really cool. a for fun thing, yeah, but sure. it, it was a you know it was an opportunity to to kind of tangent off of something that, you know, me, my brother, my dad, you know, my grandpa before he passed. It was you know it's just something that we've always done in our family, and my brother's really the one who's taken it to the next level. Um, but it's still, it's, it's, it's a cool behind the scenes type of thing. And that's, that's what I like. Uh, I think it's great. I love projects like that. Cause you, you, to your point, it, it connects you with people. It causes you to think in maybe some different ways that could lead to other things. And it's not always about, oh, I'm going to start this thing and it's going to be so successful and I'm going to generate so much money. It, it's, it's also keeping your, your mind interested, uh, and pushing into new areas, um, so, okay. So th- those posts on LinkedIn where you're posting pictures of your brother fishing or, you know, pictures out in the, uh, at your parents' farm or that kind of stuff is, are those connecting you with people on LinkedIn that, that are helping you grow your business or are they just cause you love to do it? Both. I started doing it, um, because I noticed that my brother has been, incredibly active on Instagram for the past couple of years. And I, and I, and I just saw what he was doing and he's built, you know, he's built a following. Um, he's done some YouTube guest appearances with guys that, you know, have a real legitimate following. And I noticed that nobody was doing that on LinkedIn and I didn't know, I had kind of chalked it up to, you know, hunting and fishing is, is a topic that can be sensitive to a certain audience. And LinkedIn has always been Um, that social platform that's, that's, you know, stayed professional and really has been, you know, focused on business and, and just, you know, being overall a a better professional and whatever it is that you do. Um, But I, I, I wanted to find a way that we could, we could share because we do it so often and, and, and he's just gotten so naturally good at, at, at finding fish and, and just in, in doing that type of stuff that um, I just, started posting photos of, of him and stuff we started doing and just kind of found a way to, you know, tell the story of what we do on a daily and a weekly basis. And it, it just, Great. uh, yeah, it's continued from there. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Do you know, yeah, really, um, oh, go really, ahead. Dave. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say it really is about telling your story and, and it, it doesn't have to be every nuance and every detail of the story. It's crafting the parts of the story that you're telling so that it's interesting and engaging and, and it's something you can continue to tell over time. Right. So, uh, and, and it can evolve and be interesting for people. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, all I'm trying to do is, is, I mean, the, the message is we love to do this and, and we want people to know it. 
That's all. That's right. all. That's, that's, that's all we're trying sense. to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you yeah. know uh, Ashley Ray from she loves to fish.com? Do you follow you betcha. her? You Man. Absolutely. You know, same kind of thing. I love the, the, I mean, that's her business. I've been trying to get her on the show for a while and I hope, I'm hoping uh, in fall sometime. I know she's super busy, but that, that same kind of concept where you're, you're sharing to your point, you, you can do this, whether you're a plumber, a contractor, uh, whatever, you know, people like to see what's going on. And that, that I think that authenticity lends itself to building up your network, uh, and, and it may not lead to business instantly, but eventually I think it does. It makes people trust you. I, and oh, and, and really at the end point. of the day, that's all, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's a majority of, of, of what you're trying to do. Cause if, it's so hard to get people's trust nowadays with, you know, how many times you can, you know, the, the number of ways you can get scammed and yeah. all of the people out there that are, that are doing shoddy business. If you gain somebody's trust, I mean, you've, it, in my opinion, you've won. I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah. the end game. And then you, and then you have to maintain that, but getting it and, and really getting somebody to trust you to do whatever it is that you're doing for them. I, to, I, again, to me, that's, you've, you've won at that point. That's the key to success that's in cr- business credibility, and in right? life. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think that's really great. So one of the things that I hear you talk about and posting and different things is using video, uh, to, you know, promote your your small business. So how can small businesses, especially local ones, maybe uh, can use video as part of their, their marketing plan? I think it, it goes back to that point of, you know, if you don't know, you know, if you don't have an idea for, you know, a mini series or a web series or, or, or anything like that, I think it just goes back to documenting what you do on a daily basis. A majority of the time, small business owners are, are doing the nitty gritty dirty work in whatever it is that they do. And there's plenty of opportunity there for them to talk to a camera and describe what it is that they're doing or, or, you know, whatever it is that an audience may be captivated by. Um, you, you just have to do one of two things. You either have to entertain people or educate them. If you do one of those two things, like they'll it. continue to watch. Now, the, you know, the, the way you can craft the content, sure, that that'll go in a million different ways in terms of where you can go. But if you if you consistently either entertain or educate people, they, they will continue to watch. And it's just about finding, you know, a, a, a healthy combination of those two directions. And then just again, just doing things, you know, try something that maybe you think doesn't look good. And then all of a sudden, it kind of goes viral in the in the local community. And it's a, and it's a learning moment. That's, yeah. that's the way you grow. That's, 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 that's how you got to do well, it. And just getting started. Like you say, you'll look back, you know, if, if you start doing video and posting content, you're going to look back on it a year from now and go, oh my gosh, you know, it was terrible, but you're just going to get better and better and better at it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it doesn't, it doesn't take much to get started. All you need, I mean, if you have an updated iPhone You've got everything you need to at least start experimenting with the type of shot you want to get and the certain angles that you want to focus on and and how you're going to how you're going to make your video stand out. Um, if you have a smartphone, I mean you're 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 ready to go. Now there's tons of upgrading you can do from there, but that's that's all you need to 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 get your you know your toe in the water. That's great. Yeah, it gets you on stage the first time. Then you can you can get better gear for gig number two. Absolutely, the first time I played, I just had a a two hundred and forty nine dollar acoustic guitar that was modified <laughs> to plug in, and I had to ask the house to set up um, speakers for me because I didn't have my own. But you know what? You made it work yeah. until yeah. until you needed to upgrade. That's great. Yeah, I love it. Great. So awesome. okay, so let's let's talk about. Uh, obstacles in your business you know w- when you're trying to connect with uh companies and small businesses to help them you know what's the hardest thing to overcome when you start pitching your services and uh w- what systems have you created to overcome that i try to be because there is so much i i hear it from my the my current clients and the people that i've that i've done work with they're they're constantly being badgered um, by cold calls from marketing related companies that, you know, are offering these services at this price and all this kind of stuff. So, 
you know, and that and that happens in a number of industries. But that right there, with how with with how with how saturated those calls are, at least from at least from the the people that I talk to, there's automatically a wall that yeah. goes up when a small business owner gets approached with marketing, uh, you know, marketing services and marketing products. Um, it's been, I think, it's a business that people have have tried to maybe streamline a little too much i understand mm-hmm. i understand efficiency I, I i i i get that but i've just seen it firsthand where again i think i think marketing and anything related to that again has become something that that is tried people try to tr- streamline it and yeah. it's just it's you know every small business is so different in terms of what they need and what they need to do I, I, I think the hardest part is getting to getting to a decision maker and really getting them to to listen to understand, not just listen because I'm there. Um, it's it, again showing the value and really just getting them on board with with you know the things that I do is is the hardest part. So um, there's a number of factors that come into play there, but um, yeah, I just think the again the market has become saturated. So much to the point where, again, there's that wall that kind of they, people have built up, and it's 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 getting over that 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 makes it tough. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we ask every guest on the show is to talk about their their best mistake, uh, and what I mean by that is a mistake that really taught you something and, and stuck with you. We really love mistakes on the show because we think of them as tuition. Um, is there a mistake that you can share that something that stuck with you that, that really taught you a valuable lesson as you built your business? Um, it wasn't it, it, my, the mistake that stands out to me wasn't when I was building my business or anything like that. It was in my first marketing agency job. I, I, I missed a deadline that I still think about almost daily, probably to this point. It was my first job. and. Um, I was very overwhelmed, didn't want to ask for help because I wanted to, you know, prove that, that I could, I could meet this, this deadline that I just knew was, wasn't doable on my own, but I said I could, I didn't make it. And, um, like I said, it's, it's something I still think about at least on a weekly basis, close to, to a daily basis. It's just kind of one of those reminders of, you know, don't, don't ever do anything like that again is kind of what I have to tell right. myself. Um, but again, it, it was just, uh, it was for a very well-known company in the area. Um, but it was, it's definitely my, my biggest mistake working in this, working in this industry. Um, and like I said, I, I, I try to use it to this day to, avoid mistakes like sure. that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's good. So we've talked a lot about action and just starting here on this uh, episode, which I think is just a powerful message. Um, and we, we love that uh, versus over planning or falling in love with ideas, just, you know, taking action. If, if there's one action item you could tell our small business owner listeners to do today uh, that would help their small businesses, you know, based on your marketing experience, what, what would action item would that be? Take your phone, set it up in a way where you can record a horizontal horizontal video with with a good setting and make yourself talk to the camera for three to five minutes with it recording about what your company does, what you do better than your competitors, and how you can genuinely help customers and potential customers. Stop it, go back and watch it. And then that's your starting point. Just re- just get comfortable with being in front of a camera. I think that's a majority of why people don't don't want to get don't want to get you know um, in, in you know into videography is yeah. they're afraid of talking to a camera. I hear it all the time. But sure. do do it do it alone. You know, take your phone, record some type of video where again you're just talking to the camera like it's a customer and you're telling them you know why your business is is important and why you should you know, buy from them versus the competitors, just, just do that and go back and watch it. And, and you'll realize that it's not, it's not nearly as scary as you'll make it out to be. And I think if, I think if one person goes and, 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 and does that, you know, after listening to this episode, 
Um, I think it can really be the difference in terms of all of a sudden they have this awesome presence on social media that, you know, came from that one little moment. So um, that's that's my one piece Great. of advice. It's a little specific, but no, I think I, it's I, perfect. Oh, that's what that's we a, want. Yeah, that's okay. what we want. We, we, yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have nailed that. Like we we've been <laughs> well, we've been. We, this is a new thing that we've been asking people over the last I don't know four to six weeks or something. And this is the exactly the type of thing that we are looking for because when you you know you look you know for everybody that's listening, we know you press play, you're spending your time with us. We want you to have something to take away and, and look, all the big lessons are great, but when you, when, when this episode stops, you can turn your phone around and boom, now you've got something to do and you can get over that hump. You can address any of that fear, which really is just fear of the unknown, right? But now it's known and so it's gone. So that's freaking great. Yeah, I, think, I think it is great advice. And, uh, Good. you know, Taylor, thanks again for, for coming on the show. Um, I, it's just some really good tips today, uh, about how to get your message out, how to get comfortable talking about yourself and your story. Um, using LinkedIn to connect with new people. You know, I'm, I'm really, I really think people, uh, overlooked LinkedIn a lot and I think you've done a great job up there. Uh, what, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about your services? Um, the best way to find me is, is doing just that, finding me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's, it's definitely where I spend a majority of my time, um, you know, not just publishing content, but, but messaging and, and talking to people about all kinds of different subjects. So uh, if you just search Taylor Jacobson, you'll find me, and uh, that's, that's the best place to get a hold of me. That's great. We're going to link that uh, in our show notes as well. And then one last question. Are you going to get out and go fishing this weekend? I am waiting to hear <laughs> from my brother on that. Uh, my good. wife is heading out of town for a week, actually. Oh, there you go. Uh, yep, Fish so, every so, day. <laughs> yep. We are planning out what we're going after awesome. um, by the day. So I just have to get home to let the dogs out and then we're good to go. That's great. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with uh, our small business listeners. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate it. Fascinating guy, man. Wise beyond the years his LinkedIn profile yeah. would indicate. <laughs> yeah, and I, I've been following him for a while. And yeah. I, the reason why I asked him to come on the show is because it's it's different. It's not your typical LinkedIn post. And no. I, there's, a, there's a whole group of people that I've seen turning, or not changing, but using LinkedIn in some different ways to connect with people. Uh, you know, I'm an avid outdoorsman. We've had, you know, obviously some recently some other outdoors folks on the show. Um, and, uh, I, I think they've, he's done a great job of, of creating his story and sharing the things he loves. Right. Totally. He cool. has crafted that, that story for himself very well. And it sounds like he's, he's really got a knack for helping others do that too. Uh, I mean, clear, it doesn't sound like it. Like, but it sounds like it if you just listen to the episode, but it clearly is like he knows he knew exactly like that take action thing, man, was the best we've ever had. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's really good. Great. And, yeah. you know, when you if you're sharing your authentic story and the things you love to do and everything, well, that's probably going to attract, you know, potential customers that that you maybe share those things 100%. with, you know, those, those kinds of with too. So maybe, you know, you, you your chances of success uh, could be far greater because you already have something in common than, you know, well, and, and, and to his case. point, it like when you share your story, well, I, I, I could say it generally, but I can also say it very specifically. As soon as I started sharing my story in my life, like it immediately, people think they know you better largely because yeah. they know about you more. Right. And or know more about sure. you. And that means that they are more likely to trust you because they know yeah. something about you. You're not just some stranger. You've shared part of your life with them. And now they like, oh, like you folks that listen, you welcome us into your your ears, your, you know, your car, your your workout environment, your home, whatever it is. Like there's a little bit of trust there that's developed. That because, credibility, right? Yeah, you know yeah. us. Yeah, exactly. So no, yeah, it's great. Great. It's great. Yeah, I like yeah. having them on. Hey, I, I did want to point out, Dave, this, you know, this week, our mistakes pocket guide is is moving up the charts on Amazon. We were at number six on the small business top uh, sellers, I think, a couple oh, days ago. Yeah. And we're running a 99 cent promo up on the up on Amazon this week. So uh, if you go to businessshow.co slash guides, 
you will get uh, taken right over to Amazon where you can purchase Mistakes, uh, the foundation of your small business, our first small business pocket guide for just 99 cents. Yep. And once once you start reading it, you'll have a way of getting the next book too. So That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. So we appreciate your support. Uh, please let us know if you've read it. Feedback at businessshow.co. Let us know what you think. That's, and that's all it takes. Thanks so much, folks. Thanks for visiting our sponsor for this episode, linode.com slash SBS. And we will see you next week. Keep living that charmed life. 